Hey guys, welcome back to another week at the Mac Outdoor Podcast with Mia and Leah. This week we'll be chatting a little more about SHOT Show and the hunt we went on over break. Stay tuned. This summer, whether you're at the range or in the field, WSI Sports' Hypertech Bamboo Tanks, Tees, and Leggings will have you covered. Visit WSISports.com and use Leah's affiliate code LLCO10 for 10% off your purchase. All products are proudly made in the USA. WSI is bringing back pride in American-made clothing. Again, that code is LLCO10 for 10% off your order at WSISports.com. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mac Outdoors podcast, where a dynamic mother-daughter duo share their adventures, tips, and advice. I am Mia, and I'll be accompanied by the one and only daughter, Leah. It is time to get to outdoors, hunt, shoot, and spend time with family and friends. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in this week. So last week, we chatted about SHOT Show, and we left out a couple things. We talked about gear, but we didn't talk a whole lot about firearms, and I know there was some cool ones this year, so why don't you start us off with shotguns? (laughs) Okay, so Leah is a fan of shotguns, her favorite sport, right? Shotgun shooting? (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. So Leah shoots a Winchester over under is that correct what what model is it it's uh model 101 yeah and i know you're in love with that gun and it fits you really nice suits you well you shoot really good with it yes um while i was at shot show i was i had an assignment for gear junkie to find new stuff for women so it was really a challenge because a lot of guns are just kind of universal and not a lot of companies have specific to women guns. Like they have colors that women like and stuff like that. Like Kimber has some 1911s that are sapphire and some are gold and, you know, different colors. Beretta has some like Tiffany blue. A lot of companies have some Tiffany blue stuff, but at some shotgun booths, I found shotguns that are specifically designed for women. And one of the boots is Siren, and Siren came out with their shotguns five years ago, and it's only women's shotguns is what they make. So this year, they actually came out with a new gun. When somebody said, go to Siren and look at their women's guns, and I was like, well, they've, they've been out. It's not new. And they said, no, no, they have a new gun. And sure enough, they did. It's called the Siren L4S, and what it is is they have reduced the length of the tube magazine So the magazine is shortened by one. So including the chamber, you can hold four rounds instead of five. And what it does is it reduces the weight on the forend. So that's a good thing. And before that, their design, it's specifically designed for a woman, you know, a raised comb and a dropped butt so that it fits women. So that was one, one of them. Then I write for Beretta, so I heard they had a new shotgun, and theirs is called the Beretta Vittoria, and not Victoria, but Vittoria, no C in there, and I ran by there, and in between everything, I didn't get all of the specs, but it too has the raised comb and the dropped butt on the stock. That one will be available later this year, same with the L4S will be out later this year, But the one that really, really excited me was a Charles Daly shotgun. And they have an over, under, and a semi-automatic, which so does Siren. Beretta's is just a break action, but Siren has over, unders, and semi-autos. But this Charles Daly, it's a 214E is the model. And they actually have engineered the entire shotgun toward a woman. The fore end is a little bit more slim to fit a lady's hand. The grip, the like trigger stock is smaller so that your fingers can wrap around it, which you have really big hands. So that may not be an issue for you, (laughs) but a lot of women, that's an issue and, and young kids. The Charles Daly also has the dropped butt raised comb. And then like siren, they actually have an engineered cant and um, the way the stock is twisted and dropped is 
Twisted right now, it's designed for a right-hand shooter. So not for you yet, Leah. Oh, cool. <laughs> but the way that's twisted, what it does is it, it leans in where you're going to get your good cheek weld, and then it twists around so that the stock's not going to be direct on a lady's breast muscle. It's kind of canted away so that it fits comfortably in there. And so when you shoot, it's not sliding around. Hmm. You're so skinny, that may not be an issue, but I know larger breasted women, they might, they might have some concerns there. So that was really cool that they actually have that shotgun that is like specifically engineered for women. And that one's really cool. I hope to get to try that later this spring. And then the siren I'll also be trying. I'll head up to Denver and go on a hunt with a lady up there who is a representative for siren because they don't have any available for demo. So I'll go shoot some of her guns. So I'll let you know about that when I get to go do those. So those were three guns that I thought you would think were pretty cool at SHOT Show. They all sound really nice. Yep. They're all really pretty shotguns, all three of them. I mean, just as far as not just the design and engineering, but the, the actual aesthetic when you look at them, they're all three really beautiful guns. So that's what I have for you this week from Guns from SHOT Show. And last week, we also kind of talked about taking you on hunts and having you trek up and down mountains and stuff like that. And what we didn't tell our listeners is that we also headed on a whitetail hunt. Is that your second whitetail hunt, Leah? I believe so. <laughs> so Leah and I had attended a whitetail hunt with Remington Country, and we went to an area that none of us, nobody hunting, saw any deer um, until the very last evening when it was too dark, one of the groups saw some deer way off in the trees. So that hunt wasn't very exciting, do you think, Leah? No. How, how would you compare that hunt to this hunt? That one was in Missouri and this one was in Oklahoma. In Missouri, we did ground blinds mostly. I don't know. In Oklahoma, we did tree stands, which I was injured for the Oklahoma one, so... I don't know how to compare. It was a little more rough on me. Climbing up into the trees? Yeah. Yeah. And that's something, I mean, like when we went to Canada, we sat in some what I thought were kind of rickety stands and, you know, they were Yeah. They were surprising to me for us being from Colorado and just spot and stalking and what had we hunted ladder stands and box blinds before that. <laughs> and in Canada, they were clamp-on stands and with like three H inch super thin plywood on there, yeah. wooden little half two by four pegs to climb up the trees, right? So that to me was kind of sketchy. <laughs> and this one in Oklahoma was actually more sketchy, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Leah was a little bit uncomfortable in her stand, not only getting up there, but once you got in there, since your back hurt, something with those homemade stands that are clamp-ons was the seat was too tall. Is that right? Or how was your stand? Well, this, the seat wasn't really a seat, more of two metal bars going across. And me having no padding, that wasn't too enjoyable. So I, and it was just high enough where I couldn't sit without my legs falling asleep. So I stood there for the four or five hours that we were in there. Yeah. That I'm not supposed to stand too long with my back. <laughs> and I just somehow crawled up this tree to get into the stand and pulled a muscle or something climbing in the tree. <laughs> so I wasn't too happy with that. And I didn't get to shoot a deer that day. So Yeah. And also for you for your back, I mean that was kind of a a hunt ender for you basically having to be in that stand not having a good seat and having to stand up when your back was hurt and this was before Leah's MRI so we didn't know exactly what was going on but it also while we were in Oklahoma it was super freezing cold 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 so as you know like for our listeners when you get cold and stiff your back starts to tighten up more so we were only there for two and a half days and Leah hunted that first night and then we hunted a ground blind 
the next afternoon. Yeah. The, the ground blind was, of course, way more comfortable, but that day we didn't see any deer. And so Leah didn't have fun again hunting whitetail. <laughs> <laughs> It was a white tail. I don't know about them. Yeah, and I mean, she did great trekking up and down the mountains, chasing after that mountain lion the week before, and then the next week, you know, trying to chase white tail while you're sitting still was a little rough on her. And I can attest, <laughs> sitting still is really, really hard for us from Colorado. I mean, I I have a hard time staying still without my muscles cramping up and things like that. So. That was a challenge. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> For sure. So guys, tell us, um, I actually did tag a whitetail doe during that hunt with my bow. Tell us when you're whitetail hunting, because we don't get to hunt whitetail a lot, what kind of tips do you have as far as scent and being quiet and your stands? We, of course, brought our safety harnesses, which were very important in these stands that we were in. But what other tips do you have for us? Let us know. You can message us on our social media or other outlets, and you know how to find us. It's also in the show notes. But let us know what your whitetail hunting tips are. And when Leah got back, she did her MRI. Well, we had a little time in between, but ended up relaxing, kicking back, taking care of your back for a few days, right? And then you had your MRI, but then you headed back to school. And right away, you're like back in action while I'm at SHOT Show, you're studying away. And a lot of people while we were at SHOT Show were asking, what is Leah doing? And I told them, and you are listeners, you need to follow LegitOutdoors.com and follow Legit Outdoors on Facebook and Instagram. Are you on Twitter also? Not currently on Twitter. Not with Legit yet. So Legit Outdoors on Facebook and Instagram and go check out Leah's work because she's been doing some awesome photography. And Leah, tell us all about your what you're doing with your photography. Well, since I'm pursuing journalism, I've kind I've slowly fallen into my groove of photojournalism. And with being in Montana. There's a lot of cowboys and horses, and I like all of that stuff. And I have started photographing ranch life and rodeos and all the behind the scenes of that. And so on my Legit Outdoors, I share stories and pictures from behind the scenes at the events and some pictures of bull riding. Right now, I've only shot a couple rodeos, but they were strictly bull riding. But hopefully this spring and summer, I'll be shooting the high school rodeos and a couple other local rodeo circuits. So that should be exciting. That'll be super cool. Yes. And are you going to be doing any outdoor photography or wildlife photography as well? Or do you have any plans for that? I'm trying to get in the works of it. I'm it's pretty hard to juggle everything yeah you've got to do your school first of course and (laughs) yeah (laughs) rodeos are on the weekends so when do you get outside to look at wild animals I guess huh (laughs) on the drives there (laughs) yeah I hope to do more of that photography I hope this fall I'll get to go hunt and chase some animals or at least get out there and maybe even this spring actually I'm trying to apply to get a turkey tag up here it's not much but it's a hunt so I'm excited to try and do that that'll be cool and on that hunt are you kind of going to be a mentor hopefully um, one of my friends is more of a duck hunter and she's interested in going turkey hunting which is how I decided I wanted to get a turkey tag so hopefully we both hopefully you two girls can go out and tag a big tom yeah and here in montana you have to draw a turkey tag so oh so hopefully you'll get your tag and then you can get it (laughs) hopefully i'll draw a tag so (laughs) there aren't as many turkey the population isn't as big as down here in colorado that's what i gather from having to draw a tag and i've seen 
um, a couple good groups of turkeys earlier this fall when I first moved up here. But I'm sure these harsh winters they have up here and the amount of predators they have up here, I would imagine their population isn't as high as in Colorado. Yeah, you probably definitely have to have a different management strategy with all of that stuff going on, huh? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And for you guys, our listeners, if you have heard our ad at the beginning of our show for WSI Sports, Leah is an affiliate with WSI, and anytime you purchase from them, she gets a little tiny percentage, which isn't much, but... I'm mentioning this because anything that she gets, she's using and saving up for a new lens for her camera. So if you guys could help her out, poor college kid is trying to get a better (laughs) lens for her camera and so she can have some awesome photos. As I mentioned, go check out legitoutdoors.com and look that up on Facebook and Instagram and go give her a follow. Let her know what a great job she's doing. And as I said, anything you use her affiliate code for, that's LLCO10, she gets a little tiny percentage and she can use that toward her equipment. Yes, thank you guys for the support for WSI and my new lens someday. And thank you also for the support of our Mac Outdoor Podcast. We appreciate you guys tuning in and listening. We are signing off.